Hello Rex. Hello Cowan Heights. Guess what day it is. It's Eclipse Monday. It's also the beginning of week 14 of my ketamine treatments. Yeah. I'm a little annoyed today because obviously I'll tap again. See our weather outside, nice and gloomy. Focus on me, there we go. Anyway, I had an appointment this morning, or this afternoon, sorry, at one o'clock, a psychiatrist appointment. And because I had that appointment, I just wiped out any intentions of going west to uh, check out the eclipse. But then my appointment got canceled. And of course, my mind, I mentioned this many times before, if I have something in the calendar, I can't do anything else. And it threw me for a loop, it messed me right up. My appointment's Friday now, which I'm annoyed with because it's Friday. I don't know why I'm annoyed with that because I am retired and every day of the week is the same pretty much. But uh, yeah, I wish the appointment was Friday initially because then I could have planned for the uh, pretty eclipse. Oh well, I'll see it again when I am 427 years old. That's right, every 375 years, I think. I did have a thought that might make me feel a little bit better about missing out on the eclipse. I hate traffic and knowing the amount of traffic that's going to be on that Trans-Canada Highway leaving St. John's today and heading towards Clarenville, I probably would not have went anyway, regardless if I didn't have my psychiatrist appointment. So uh, maybe I would have smoked enough weed and got my wife to drive or something, but <laughs> other than that, no, I can't see me out in that traffic. So let's... Uh, I'll watch it on NTV News. That's my plan. That's what I'll do with my dog. I'm not going to watch it all on the news. I'm actually going to go out on the deck and smoke a joint and uh, enjoy the darkness when it hits. Although I think my neighbors got their lights on already. They're going to Clarenville to watch it. And I think I'm pretty sure they left their lights on. So that's going to ruin my darkness. I haven't tried these yet, so I am going to save this for the Eclipse. Strawberry cough. I wonder what that's like. Well, it's getting a little gloomy out now. Pretty soon she'll be done. The sun is up there somewhere. Maybe to the left a bit. darker not too bad got my strawberry cough syrup ready here's to the eclipse cheers I see the Sun no wait a minute that's the uh, neighbor's light sorry my mistake That was pretty anticlimactic, I would say. I am so glad I'm not on that Trans-Canada Highway right now, heading east. I'd lose my mind, I know it. Good morning, Cowan Heights. 
despite my greeting, I'm in a very grumpy mood this morning. No reason why, just am. And look, that would make you even grumpier, wouldn't it? You can see the snow squalls coming towards us. That's not how it's supposed to be. At least they're not big snow squalls. I'll take that as a consolation prize. But any snow right now, on the 9th of April, I don't wanna see. My fingers are crossed that the rest of this week turns out to be a little bit better. The first couple of days, I'm not doing so well. I I know on my videos I try to be a little bit more jovial, I guess, but uh, but it is fully a fake it until you make it situation, and uh, it's like I I just, I can't leave the house to engage in activities that are supposed to help improve my mood I'm trapped I'm stuck and that's how I feel like my truck has been parked outside since last Monday so a week ago actually a week and a day so it's been eight days now my vehicles have been parked and I haven't moved it actually I did move it I moved it from a driveway to the road once the parking ban ended last Friday or last Thursday. But since then, I haven't moved. I went to my parents' place last weekend, and uh, since I came back, I've uh, been pretty, uh, pretty non-active is, uh, is one way to put it. And every now and then, it, it takes a toll. Like I, I have my rough times the last week. I have bad days. Well, pretty much most days I have bad moments or bad hours. But um, yeah, it's hitting me a bit harder right now because I know I'm doing ketamine treatments and, and they're supposed to be helping me. And, uh, and I'm very, very discouraged, extremely discouraged right now. And a, a lot of it is just because I just can't conjure up the motivation or inspiration or whatever it is to get off my ass and, and go outside and get back out in nature because nature is what heals me. And I know that, but in order for me to do that, I got to get up, get dressed, go out in the truck and figure out where I'm going to go and just, uh, and that all of that is just overwhelming right now. Like I can't even think of a trail to walk on other than one across the street at Kitty Gull, which I'm sick of. And of course there's Byron Park just down over the hill, but that's usually crowded and that's not what I'm looking for. I can't relax, I can't do be mindful, I can't be present when there's people around and walking their dogs and their kids and all that stuff. My psychologist and my psychiatrist are after me to, and a case manager from Veterans Affairs, are after me to get a uh, occupational therapist to work with me to try to help me do tasks. But my mind just like it has an aversion to it or something. It's like no, I don't want to be dragged off and dragged around by the hand with somebody to do tasks because I'm a solo person. I like to do tasks alone in quiet, in peace, with nobody around, a dog gone, everybody gone. And it's intimidating even with an occupational therapist to try and do tasks because she's gonna be standing over my shoulder watching me or helping me or whatever it is and it just makes me feel very useless and inferior and just just 
just no good. That's how it makes me feel. And there's multiple, like there's multiple reasons or excuses that I, I don't want an occupational therapist right now. I was like, I, and it's like a catch 22 because I want to be able to do these things on my own. I'd love to be able to finally get up and get out and do things. I'd love to be able to continuously and constantly or consistently be okay with doing a task without becoming overwhelmed and just uh, feeling stupid every time you try to do something. So I just, I want to do it on my own, but I'm, I know that I can't, but that's still not enough for me to say, okay, yes, I want an occupational therapist because I just, it's another bloody medical professional that's watching over me. I got my psychologist, I got my psychiatrist, I got my ketamine treatments, I got my family doctor. And between all of them, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm sick of treatment. It's like, it's, that's all it is for the last 10 years or so is just going to appointments and getting the help I need. But there's something in this God head of mine that won't let me help myself. And I don't know how to shake it. And it's, it's a battle. It's a constant battle. Like I'm very overwhelmed very like I'm like a, a duck on water like most times people look at me and I look like I'm like this pretty relaxed I'm talking to you normally like right now I look like I'm probably in a decent mood but underneath the water underneath that calm water that the duck is swimming on the feet are just going like this right pedaling under and that's what's going on inside like, everything I, I surrender to everything I give up so much stuff to fit in that I'm no longer me it's like a year ago I would constantly sit out of my, I could be out of my deck for probably a couple hours meditating being mindful and just enjoying the sounds of the birds and the wind blowing through the trees, all that kind of stuff. I don't go out on my deck anymore. I do go out, but not near as much. I go out occasionally at night now, but not as much because I'm anxious. Like I have this, like, uh, forecasting in my mind. Like, uh, I forget what the word is. Like I already have these scenarios and situations. It's like, if I go out that door, the dog's going to bark. Or if I go out that door, there's going to be lights on. So why even bother? That's that's kind of the way it is right now. I'm surrendering, and therefore I am staying in my recliner because the world, I don't, I don't belong in this world. Because everywhere I go, even in the house, it's... I gotta pretend, I gotta fake it all. Like I'm pretending to be calm on the outside, pretending to be here, to pretending that I'm watching a TV show or reading a book or listening to music or whatever it might be. But inside I'm just torn up. It's like, I hate everything. It's like, I just wanna, like I do wanna die most days and it's because I don't fit in, I'm inferior, I, I esteem issues, the whole works, and it's, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a, I'm having a bad day here, and uh, I need to keep venting, because I think it's important that people realize that people struggle, even when they look like they're on cloud nine. It's tough being around people you care about, and feeling like you don't want to be around anybody or anything. And it's nothing against anybody or anything. It's just, I have that reaction. Like, yeah, I just, I sit here in shame. That's it. My wife is a nurse. She's got a very honorable job. 
a selfless job. She's working her 40 plus hours a week. And, and what do I do? I sit here and once a week I'll do laundry. I'll do a few dishes, cook every now and then. But other than that, I'm just this big lump of meat sitting in the middle of the living room that's probably going to start rotting and decaying soon. Yeah, so I'm almost at the point where I'm going to say screw this ketamine shit, ditch all my medical professionals, and just wing it and hope for the best. Ditch all my pills, throw them all out, nothing to do with it, and just meditate and go for walks in the woods or something because none of this shit is working it's not working on me like i am like white knuckled right now like just sitting here clenched up like and the stupid part is most of it's irrational and irrational and not necessary i want to be normal again is that <laughs> I want to I want to feel joy. I want to love. I want to feel love. I want to feel that. And I don't. And I don't feel any happiness. I don't feel excitement. I don't feel any positives. And it's uh, and it makes life hard. It makes like boy, I don't want to do anything when I feel miserable. Nobody does. When you're feeling miserable all the time, you don't do anything all the time. These are the days I wish I was dead. And no, I don't have a plan, so don't worry about me. But it's what I'm having these days, these chaotic, I don't know what you'd want to call it, it's like the anxiety is up and the depression's up and it's all these things just start coming together at once and you just can't handle it and uh, you just want it to end. That's what it is. That's it. You want it to end. And that's why I am doing these ketamine treatments because I want it to end and... It'll probably end, yeah. See, this is not how people see me. They look at me and probably think I got it made. They see me riding my motorcycle or doing shit like that. But this is how I'm feeling 99% of the time. That's it. I, I feel like this most of the time. And it's horrible. It's a horrible, bloody feeling. Anyway, I'm going to end this video. This right here. Is what I do most of the time. That's what happens when you lose your interest in anything that you find joy from. Because there's nothing that really. Gets my blood flowing anymore. There's nothing that I really enjoy doing. Most things, it's going through the motions. Years ago, I used to be really big into fitness. Every day, I'd work out, sometimes twice a day. And, uh, and uh, I, I was enjoying it. I'd get up at 5 a.m. and do my workout. Sometimes I'd go for runs. Sometimes I'd play sports. Like, I loved Ball hockey was probably my favorite sport, and even softball. Can't play none of that anymore. Can't play, can't work out anymore. It gets frustrating and it takes a toll on you when you slowly start lose. Like most people, you have a handful of hobbies that you enjoy doing. And just imagine everything you enjoy doing all of a sudden they're plucked away one by one and you end up with just your mind. Writing, for example, was a big outlet for me. I even published a pub poetry book because I always 
wrote poems whenever I would feel certain emotions, whether it was anger, fear, love, whatever it might be. I would express myself through poetry. And by doing that and going through that process, it's almost like you're giving yourself an exorcism is like you're getting out everything off your chest and onto paper or on to your tablet or whatever. But I, it's been about a year since I, uh, since I wrote a poem and I just, I can't do it. It's like, I don't have, I lost that creative spark that I used to have. I can't write poetry right now. And that's another thing that's gone. It's like there was two things left that I was hanging on, maybe three, I guess. Poetry was huge for me. It was such a huge outlet and so important to me, but that's gone. The other one, I forget now. There was a couple of things that I, getting out and making videos, I still cling on to that one a bit, but that one's by, that one's by a thread. Like you, for example, I haven't used a drone in quite a while, which I used to incorporate into most of my videos. So right now I'm pretty much just using my phone. That's, I resorted back to that and I'm in this style of video, which is not what I like doing. I don't like doing these at home videos of me going through emotions, being miserable or whatever it might be, but it's keeping me busy. It's keeping me occupied. And it's getting me talking because I don't talk to anybody. So there is there is a benefit to it. And I know it and I feel it because it's a distraction. Because right now I could be throwing shit at walls. But instead I'm venting here. So I guess in a way this has become my poetry outlet in a sense. Way to get my emotions out. I have my motorcycle. But hopefully I ride the thing because right now I don't have any interest in it. And uh, I had huge interest in it a couple weeks ago because I was pumped up enough to go and get the tire changed on it. And I got everything I need for an oil change, but I haven't done that yet. I might do that some month or year. But I did go for one ride and... I don't have that urge to ride again right now. And uh, that's scary because all these other hobbies I had started up, started deteriorating the same way as like nothing out of it. It's just, just as exciting as just walking over to that window and having to peek out and come back. Because I find even riding motorcycle at times, it gets very monotonous. I get on it and I just start driving. I'm like, this is stupid. This doesn't make sense. It's useless. And I'll turn around and go home. But I was able to start reading again. So that is a positive, I guess. I'm on my fifth book since the new year, which is a record for me. Now, I don't remember the details of the books. I got the names of the books written down so I can keep track of them, but I don't remember details. I remember it's a book about a serial killer. Like that's as far as I can go with details. And, uh, oh well, that's it. It's not like I got to give a book report after reading them. But it's the same thing with TV shows. I watch them, I enjoy them while I'm watching them. But as soon as they're over, I don't remember what they were about and I learned to not really care but uh, memory issues do have troubles cause me problems in many other ways though on that note I think I am going to go and try and read for a little bit see if I can settle down I'm starting to settle down a little bit now as I'm talking this out but maybe I'll meditate first although it's hard to meditate when you're in this kind of a mood, you got to be in the right mindset, I find, to meditate because uh, it's one thing to be distracted because it's okay to be distracted while you're meditating, like 
thinking about thoughts because you practice that. You, you think something and then you catch that thought and you just watch it go away and then you bring yourself back to whatever it is you have yourself grounded on. Like I usually anchor myself in my breathing. So I'll take like deep breaths and I'm always conscious of in and out and in and out throughout the whole process. So once I lose track of my meditation or I get distracted, it's, I just non-judgmentally just, oh, I'm thinking, oh, look at that thought, look at that go. And then back to my breathing and back to my meditating. It's, um, it's helpful. I, uh, I'm getting something out of it. So that's what I'm going to go do now. Meditate and then read for a little bit. Well, it's not 4.20, but it is 2.30. Time to have my first one for today. My nice minty ones. Well, at least the snow is not sticking that's falling today. This is what I should have done earlier instead of having my little uh, tantrum, I guess you can call it, breakdown. I should have came outside and medicated and then meditated and settled myself down instead of doing what I did. Can't help it in the moment. That shit hits and there's nothing stopping you, right? It's supposed to read F mental health. <laughs> Actually, I should have said F stigma, not F mental health. Starlight sky, our love secret line, like leaves we soar so high. Beneath the moonlight, self touch your hand in mine, it gets me every time.
not much is working on me today. I'm uh, running out of tools. I got a feeling it's what, seven o'clock now? Another couple hours, I'm going to medicate very heavily and just go to bed and put my headphones on and listen to nature sounds, listen to some guided relaxation meditation exercises or something because uh, staying awake right now is not uh, is not cutting it. I'd sooner be unconscious right now. I just want to be awake. I'd sooner be asleep and just unaware of everything right now. It's been a few years since I drank heavily. I used to be a very heavy drinker. Every weekend, blackout drunk, once or twice a week, and depending on the week, it could be even more than that. I'm after going uh, 18 days straight before blackout. That was interesting. But uh, since I got my cannabis prescription, uh, the drinking stopped. It's been several years since I got drunk. And yes, I've had a couple occasions, maybe twice a year, usually at Smuggler's Cove and Bow Boy Beach. I'll have uh, maybe a six pack of non-alcoholic beer to go with my cannabis. But right now I'm wondering if a good blackout drunk would be just what I need. I don't know. Although the idea of a hangover doesn't sound too appealing, so that might be uh, a deal breaker right there. I'm gonna think on that one. I just wanna be unconscious, that's it. It's not a difficult request, I don't think. These last couple of days are really doing their number on me. They're just chipping away, picking away. I feel like that character from Charlie Brown with that blanket of dust. It's like the, uh, the cloud is always around them. That's like the, oh, the black dog, the old black dog, yeah. You know? On the positive side, tomorrow I have a ketamine appointment, so that means I'll know, I'll have at least an hour where I'll be relaxed anyway, because the treatments are relaxing. Even uh, a little time afterwards is a bit relaxing. So uh, at least I got that to look forward to. The hell of the rest of it. It's not that often I smoke two back to back, but uh, tonight it's time. I need to. I have to. They're only small joints anyway, like 0.3 grams or something, so it's it's not a not a big amount anyway. Time to ditch the phone for the night, so good night and see you in the morning. Good morning, Cowan Heights. It's not snowing, at least. Welcome to Hump Day. It's Wednesday. Ketamine Wednesday. Yeah, here's to that. <laughs> Soon to be toasting to a dentist appointment. Time to get my breakfast on to go. First up, we have a convenience pack. Not to be confused with a snack pack. Hey, pills. Perfect for what ails you. Cholesterol, sugars, IBS, stomach issues, anxiety med. Yeah, it's all there. All right, that was the main course. Now to get ready for dessert. Dessert is this guy. Peanut butter. I like these, especially this flavor from Costco. It's not really much of a breakfast though, is it? 
mean, I eat these pretty much every day for breakfast. Sometimes I'll have a one or two heavenly hunks with it, but this is it. And uh, I know I'm not taking care of myself properly, nutritiously, so uh, this is the best I can do right now. So I just finished meditating. It's uh, part of my daily routine. I meditate a couple times a day. That was a tough one. It's the first time I actually broke down and cried during a meditation. <clears throat> and I think it was because like, the first part of the meditation was normal. You do your breathing, you focus on the sensations of your body and things like that and just feel yourself as this ball of energy floating in space. But then I had to start reflecting on, had to practice what they call metta. That's loving kindness is where you meditate and your focus of meditation could be someone you like or don't like, a friend or relative, family member or whatever. And you're supposed to just think all these positive thoughts like, I wish you well, I wish you peace and happiness. And you just do that, trying to envision this person just becoming peaceful and pleasant and comfortable and relaxed in their life. And you just wish the best for them. But this morning's meditation was shifted it was focused on yourself so it was focused on me and it's 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 hard when you don't feel love and affection and that to try and find love and affection for yourself and one of the things that I done in the meditation, well, I followed the instruction that was a guided meditation, was I had to reflect on when I was a child and focus on me as that little innocent child and how well you, you just want them to be, how successful, how healthy, how just stress-free and just healthy and just living life and to the fullest kind of thing. But I have bad memory issues and I have a very challenging time trying to remember myself as a child, even a teenager. Like I remember spurts, bits and pieces, but it's um, like even photos don't jog memories. Like I already have memories, but most of my memories are photos. They're memories of pictures of me as a kid. Like I have zero rem memories of my brother. He's nine years younger than me. So obviously I was nine at the time he was born and I remember nothing about his childhood, him as a teenager or anything like that. And, it's, uh, and it breaks me. But anyway, back to the love and kindness and trying to re reciprocate that to yourself. I, I just couldn't and I, and it broke me. Like I broke down and sobbed like a little child when, when this was happening because it hurts. And, uh, and it's, it's just another reminder, I guess, of, of the mess I'm in right now. Yeah, you'd think after, this is what, my 14th week of ketamine treatments, I wouldn't be caught up crying and, and being sad. I don't know. I think I am going to watch that video on how to improve your sleep. It's only two hours and 42 minutes. I won't get to finish it before my treatment. But uh, I think I need it. Just to get some more tips, because I find I fall asleep fairly easily, but I wake up constantly from about 4.30, maybe even earlier onward. By the way, the guy to, actually first, that guy, Dr. Haberman, or Andrew Huberman, 
he's uh, he's actually a pretty good source of information when it comes to uh, a lot of mental health type of topics <clears throat> like ketamine treatments things like that he's he's good to uh, listen to and the other guy on the right dr robert sapolsky <clears throat> um he's interesting to listen to because he's uh, one of the leading i don't know if what you call it experts on free will and uh that's a topic a lot of people have uh, have trouble uh, wrapping their heads around because we all or most of us believe we actually have free will and he can lay it out pretty pretty strategically to show you that really we don't have free will and I'm someone who's along the lines of believing that we do not have free will but anyway I'm not gonna watch that one now I'll watch the uh, how to improve your sleep. See if that gives me any help. On a positive note, there's blue in the sky now. That's, uh, it's been a while since I've seen that. Blue matches my mood, I think. I think I'll take a break from sleep tips and watch some itchy boots. Waiting for my cab ride with my buddy. Mm. I should cuddle with you more to make me feel better. Well, my transportation is here. Time to go. Sorry, buddy. I'll see you later. Well, I made it here, and it was actually a pretty interesting cab ride because uh, the gentleman that was driving the cab, he was psyched. And I noticed there was a Buddha statue at the front of the vehicle, so I decided to ask about it. Turns out it's his friend's, it's his friend's Buddhist, and uh, he's uh, psyched, which is Hinduism. So we actually had a pretty good conversation about religion. It was interesting. Watching all these kids go around with pizza is making me hungry. That protein bar just didn't cut it. Well, time to head up. Head up and see what time to go. Yay, I almost got 100%. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Here we go. First dose in, my second dose is in. After my third and five more minutes, I get to get some of, where are they? Those guys, Tic Tacs. And my soundtrack today is Mountain Spa Hot Tub. Third one is in, so that means I get to have one of these. See you on the other side. All done. Time to call a cab and get out of here. Whispers in my head. What you gonna do? So take it, kid. Oh, okay, this is supercharging. Well, I've had enough of this week, so I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for tagging along. I know these videos are not exciting. They're boring. I know that. But uh, hopefully the next one will be a little bit better. We'll see how things go later on in the week. But uh, this one has to end now because... It just has to. <laughs> it's gone on long enough. Anyway, take care. I'll see you in the next video.